everyone's having a uh, great day. What I want to go over today is uh, on this video is the, the animal cell or the human cell. The animal cell is very tiny. Okay, we cannot see it with our unaided or naked eye. So about 400 years ago, humans developed a tool to be able to see these cells, and this tool is called a microscope. A light microscope allows us to magnify an object about 1,000 times. Then about 100 years ago, we invented a scanning electron microscope, which could magnify anywhere from 10, 10,000, to 500,000 times. So we can literally really see the curvatures of these organelles within the cell. And over time, we developed a, uh, a basic concept of the cell, and eventually we call that the cell theory. Okay. And the cell theory has a, uh, four basic concepts. Okay. The first one is that cells are the building blocks of all organisms. The second concept is that all cells come from division of pre-existing cells. Okay. Our third concept is the cells are the smallest unit to carry out life's essential physiological functions. And the final concept is each cell maintains homeostasis at the cellular level. Okay, and then it's just these two types of cells that I want to discuss. We have um, just the sex cells and somatic cells. Sex cells are like the male sperm and female egg. And then the somatic cells are all the cells that are outside of those sex cells, like the bone cells, uh, muscle cells, uh, skin cells, uh, nerve cells, blood cells. Okay, all those cells are somatic cells, and the sex cells is just a male sperm and female egg. Okay, let's start with the centri uh, centrosomal centrioles. Okay, you can see these uh, centrioles, these uh, centrioles within this central. Uh, central zone, which is this space in here, centrioles within the central zone, and these centrioles are arranged uh, in right angles. Okay, and also uh, these are made up of microtubules arranged by a uh, three by nine arrangement, and these microtubules eventually can radiate outwards and then um, form the cytoskeleton of the cell, which gives the cell its shape and rigidity. Okay, let's look at our next one the cytoskeleton. Okay, the cytoskeleton, we don't have any microtubules here uh, extending in here, but we have a cytoskeleton. We have our cell membrane, okay, which is like a border, separates the intracellular fluid with the extracellular fluid, okay? It also has a bunch of uh, channels that allow certain ions to come in and others not. Um, it also receives signals like from antibodies or from hormones. It says a lipid bilayer containing phospholipids, steroids, proteins, and carbohydrates. The function of a phospholipid bilayer is for isolation, protection, sensitivity, support, controls entry and exit of materials. Let's look at something else that's on this uh, cell membrane. We're going to have to look at this other model, which is called a microvilli. Okay, you see the microvilli on top here. The microvilli is also a non membranous organelle. Microvilli are extensions of the plasma membrane containing microfilaments. The function of these microvilli is to increase surface area to facilitate absorption of extracellular materials. And I would probably like to add to that. These microvilli are used within the um, uh, urinary system. Like I say, in the proximal convoluted tubules, uh, we have microvilli, I mean, cuboidal cells. This is, a, this is a cube with many microvilli. And those microvilli are gonna absorb 90% of those amino acids, lipids, and carbohydrates that are lost in the filtrate. Because what happens in the kidneys is that the kidneys take our blood it takes the blood in our body and it filters it, it cleans it, otherwise we'd have stagnant blood. Some of the filtrate that, that gets uh, released from the bloodstream into the, the uh, nephron of our kidneys, uh, some of that filtrate is, uh, has high amounts of nutrients 
And so what these microvilli do is that they absorb those nutrients. Okay? So that's the microvilli. Now cilia, we don't, I don't have a model here, but cilia are um, even longer than microvilli. They're, they're super high, okay? And cilia are long extensions of the plasma membrane containing microtubules. Uh, there are two types, primary and motile. Okay, functions, a primary cilium acts as a sensor. Motile cilia move materials over a cell surface. So maybe I'll give you an example. Uh, cilia within the windpipe, which is called a trachea. Cilia acts like a mucus escalator. So it kind of like lifts up that mucus from our trachea that it may have trapped some, uh, some dust or particles out of the trachea and, and then you just cough it out. Okay. So the cilia helps move things, and that's also a non-membranous organelle. Ribosomes, we do have ribosomes. I'm going to refer back to my other uh, assistant here. We have uh, these ribosomes here, okay, these little white dots. Ribosomes are RNA plus proteins. Fixed ribosomes bound to rough endoplasmic reticulum, free ribosomes scattered in cytoplasm function protein synthesis. Really what you want to know about these ribosomes is two types. There's the fixed ribosomes that you see on these channels. The free ribosomes will just be floating around in the cytosol, not attached to anything, but they both have the same function. They both produce proteins. And plus, and ribosomes are also a non-membranous organelle. Let's look at peroxisome. Peroxisomes, uh, I like to use this uh, gray or black one here as peroxisomes. And this, uh, in the solution to this, it has the yellow or the grayest lysosome or peroxisome. So I just decided to give one each a name. So the yellow will be the lysosome and the black one will be the, or the gray one will be the peroxisome. And the peroxisome is uh, vesicles containing degradative enzymes. So they break down a lot of things within the cell. Functions is a catabolism of fats and other organic compounds, uh, neutralization of toxic compounds generated in the process. All right, so that's peroxisome. Let's look at, and peroxisome is a membranous organelle, okay? Let's look at another membranous organelle, organelle which is the lysosome. The lysosome, I like to call it this yellow one here, here, and here. Lysosomes are vesicles containing digestive enzymes. The function is the uh, intracellular removal of dam damaged organelles or pathogens. So these organelles start getting old, the lysosome starts breaking that down or digesting it, and also pathogens that may go inside the cell, it'll also um, digest that as well. Okay. All right, let's go to our next structure, which is the Golgi apparatus, which is the structure right here. Golgi apparatus. Right. Golgi apparatus uh, stacks of flattened membranes, uh, which I call cisternae, containing chambers. And the function is to uh, storage, alteration, and packaging of secretory vesicle or secretory products and lysosomal enzymes. Okay. This Golgi apparatus produces the lysosomes right here. These will be the Lysosomes that you eventually see over here, and also uh, it'll transport secretary products via these vesicles. So it may fuse to the cell membrane and exocytose um, proteins or anything else. All right, let's go next to the mitochondria, which are all these orange ones here. Mitochondria. Okay, let's look at that. The mitochondria is a double membrane with inner membrane folds, cristae enclosing important metabolic enzymes and function is to produce 95% of the ATP required by the cell. Without ATP, um, nothing can be done. ATP is the energy it produces, that energy, so, so organelles can move, so, so cilia can move, so microvilli can absorb, and that's also uh, mitochondria is a membranous organelle. All right, let's go next to the endoplasmic reticulum. There's two types, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Network of membranous, organ, uh, membranous channels extending throughout the cytoplasm. The functions, it's synthesis of secretory products 
intracellular storage and transport and detoxification of drugs or toxins. Okay, let's look at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is the rough endoplasmic reticulum with the little dots on it. Okay. okay. Little dots, which are called the fixed ribosomes. And the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes specifically fixed, and it modifies and packages newly synthesized proteins. So those proteins will be produced by the fixed and the fixed ribosomes, and then it goes through these channels. And eventually it'll go to the Golgi apparatus where it's stored, uh, and then eventually distributed. Okay. And then we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is this one up here. You don't see any little dots on there, so that's smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes and synthesizes lipids and carbohydrates. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, synthesizes proteins and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes lipids and carbohydrates. Okay. All right, so let's look at some other things here. We got the nucleus, okay, right here, our nucleus. Um, um, this, you can call this the chromatin, so the blue things right here, okay. You have our nuclear envelope, all right. We have the nucleolus, which is this structure right here, that orange thing. The nucleolus is the site of rRNA synthesis and assembly of ribosomal subunits. Ribosomal subunits, because the ribosomes has it has two components to it: a large ribosomal subunit, a small ribosomal subunit. Okay, and then finally here we have the nuclear pores. What else can I read here? The nucleus, the nucleoplasm, which is the liquid inside here, the liquid nucleoplasm. Nucleoplasm containing nucleotides, contain enzymes, nucleoproteins, and chromatin. Surrounded by a double membrane, the nuclear envelope. The functions, control of metabolism, storage and processing of genetic information, and control of protein synthesis. And we can point out some of these structures on this other model. Okay. Here we have a Golgi apparatus here and here. This one's not cut in half. This one is. Here we see the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, SER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's got these little, you can see it, but it's kind of like these brown little things on the outside. Those are the ribosomes. Here we have our centrioles at a 90 degree angle to each other. Mitochondria, which produces our ATP. Um, here we have our nucleus, our nucleolus, our nucleoplasm, our nuclear pores, our nuclear envelope. And here we have our microvilli, which we discussed earlier. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, our, our journey with our cell here, with all its organelles. Okay. Hope you like this video. Good luck. And I will see you on the next video. Take care. Buddy.